Hey everybody, what's going on? Time for another video. This week's video is gonna be both a product walkthrough and a product explanation and experience video because I've now had a chance to put several months on this product. Uh, before we go any further, do me a favor, click the subscribe button down below. And if you have any comments, uh, leave them down below. We will get to you as fast as we can because this week it's all about talking lithium batteries. Now, I have held back for years on lithium. And the reason in the beginning was there was an uncertainty to lithium batteries. Uh, and being from the north, I also know that they had a lot of shortcomings when the super cold weather came. And we're talking about, I'm still running my boat. It's December 22nd today, and I'm still using my boat every day. So if you can't charge a battery because it's frozen, then it really does no good for me up in the north but I got a chance to get my hands on the new Dakota Lithium uh, DL Plus 135. Now, let's talk about the specs of the battery and what the website says about it, and then I'm gonna give you my personal opinion about how they've operated for me in the conditions that I'm putting them through. Now, according to Dakota, this is their ultimate battery in energy density and versatility. So. Like the name suggests, 135 amp hours of deep cycle lithium performance, but it's also got a thousand cold cranking amps of engine starting power. So let's go through the specs. This is a Dakota Lithium 135 DL Plus. Now this is a 24 group series battery, and I probably couldn't do what I'm doing right now with a traditional sealed lead acid battery. The size of it, nine and a half inches in length by 6.9 inches wide by seven and three quarter inches high, uh, but it's really a group 24 equivalent. Now, when you open this up in the box, the terminals, there is F12 terminals, posts that screw in basically with M8 size bolts, but included in the bag, you've got your standard terminal like you would use for automotive, but there's also a threaded one for marine posts uh, so whether you're using this in your car as a starting battery or you're going to be using it for your electronics and trolling motor, which is how I used it, you've got both screws and terminals that stick up for this. The weight of the battery, it's only 27.2 pounds. 135 amp hour lithium, 27.2 pounds. So that's actually 65% lighter than a sealed lead or a lead acid battery. So that's half the weight basically of a normal car battery. Now the life cycles and the battery lifespan. So they say or claim up to 80% capacity for 2,500 cycles in recommended conditions. Uh, typical automotive sealed lead acid battery has about 500 cycles of life. So 2,500, that's five times the use. Now the operating temperature, again, we're talking Canadian here, lots of cold weather fishing. This is ideal According to their website, ideal for rugged and harsh environments, much better than sealed lead acid or other lithium batteries because it's got a negative 20 Fahrenheit minimum and 150 Fahrenheit maximum op optimal operating ranges. And the good thing is that even internal heat technology allows for charging below 32 Fahrenheit. Uh, discharging this battery, 135 amp max continuous discharge is what it can handle. This I've noticed as a problem when I've had guys, I have a buddy of mine running 50 amp hour batteries for his trolling motor. And when you put his Ultrex on high, it's drawing more than 50 amps. Well, the BMS will automatically protect the batteries from being overdrawn and shut down. The problem is it renders the boat useless for two minutes until the BMS system resets itself. Kind of inconvenient if you're on a trolling motor heading or holding off a rocky shoreline and all of a sudden your BMS system kicks on and shuts everything down and you're rendered floating dead in the water. So let's talk about this internal even heat technology. Uh, basically what it's meant to do is increase the performance of the battery in extreme cold. Like I said, lithiums traditionally have had a problem. You cannot freeze them below zero, um, just not recommended. Well, when charging the battery in temperatures below zero, uh, the internal heating element will warm the cells to 32 Fahrenheit or zero Celsius. Uh, this increases the lifespan, the performance and the efficiency of the battery according to the website. The warranty on this, Dakota Lithium has been known for their warranty being 11 years. This is no different. It is an 11 year warranty as well. And the storage capacity, like we mentioned, 135 amp hours provide consistent power 
for the entire 135 amp hour. So there's no slope. It's full power all the way across is what they're claiming. So, you know, after using your trolling motor, let's say for eight hard hours, you know, sometimes with uh, AGMs or sealed lead acid, I would notice that 80% really isn't 80%. Well, I have noticed with these batteries, they give out a consistent power output. So the trolling motor is running exactly like I expect it to. Now this DL135 Plus is a 12 volt battery. So 12.8 volt battery, but it can be used in series for up to 48 volt systems. So that's a good thing to understand. If you are running, like let's just say here, we, I'm running a 24 volt on my Aircraft uh, Minn Kota Ultrax, or if I'm running a 36 volt, you can run them up to 48 volts in series. Now we said that this one has a thousand cold cranking amps uh, of starting power, which is great. Uh, it's still not recommended for manufacturers, uh, outboard manufacturers. So the marine outboards, you really need to go back and refer to the uh, manufacturer to see if they're recommending uh, lithium as a starting option. I have not seen it to this day. My Basscat still comes with a 31 series AGM as its starting cranking battery. Uh, but for trolling, running electronics, uh, charging times and everything else, this is where lithium has been taking over. All right, so there's the nuts and bolts about the DL135 plus uh, lithium battery. So this is, a lithium phosphate battery obviously and I've been running it now for seven months so and I really wanted to put it through its paces so how I've set my batteries up uh, I actually put these in my Yarcraft 219 TFX in the front section so in a walleye boat your trolling motor batteries go underneath the rod box in the middle up front and like right by the consoles the amount of weight that I saved going from AGMs to this type of battery was immense. I was 73 pounds of battery, what I had in there, and I only had the two, and then I had one single that was running, isolated, that was running my Mega Live. So I had three batteries up front at 70, let's call it 70 pounds, that's 210 pounds. You switch over to 27 pound batteries, you save 50, almost 50 pounds, 40, let's call it 40 for even sake, that's 120 pounds out of the bow of my boat. That's like taking a small person out of the bow of your boat. So right away I noticed with the Yarcraft, it did not affect whole shot. The whole shot didn't get any better because usually with weight forward in a boat, whole shot's better. But the whole shot on the Yarcraft is just so good with that Yamaha 300. But what I did notice is the bow rides a little bit lighter and crisper and you can air it out a little more by removing that 120 pounds from the front of the boat charging them. I've been using Dakota's uh, 12 volt charger. I have th them tied on and then I just plug them in at night and they've been good. The things I have noticed, they charge incredibly quickly, even after punishing them. Again, I'm running an 80 pound trolling motor on a 22 foot walleye boat, which most people don't do, but it has no problems running it all day. And I'm talking most of my time has been spent in current situations, either on the Niagara River or the St. Lawrence River, or in bigger winds where you're fighting to maintain positioning. I have drawn at 80% steady on these batteries and pushed them all day long, and I haven't had them skip a beat. And by the time I plug them in at night, usually by after dinner, they're already charged. So that tells me that there, there's plenty of juice left in them. I have stretched them out to two and a half days of trolling motor on the St. Lawrence and did not charge them. I don't like really running my batteries down that far, uh, but for my test purposes, I wanted to see in case I was in a remote location and didn't have power or in the case of a power outage and you can't charge your batteries, uh, it was no problem to run that boat for multiple days on these batteries. Now, when it comes to running my electronics on it as well, I have my third battery up front that is dedicated to run my live um, from Hummingbird. So Mega Live is running off that. I actually, when I keep my system portable, I run it off of one of the Dakota 10 amp power boxes and it will run a Mega Live transducer by itself all day long. I actually ran it for a day and a half to test how far the 10 amp battery would go on a Mega Live transducer. Well, now I've got one of the DL135 pluses in the front that's isolated to my electronics up front and they run the electronics without a beat all day long. We're talking two 10 inch graphs and a live and a 360 
all powered by one DL135 plus. And then at the end of the night, you plug it in and within a few hours, it's peaked up, charged, ready to rock again. So being in the fact that I'm running a big high sided boat uh, with a small trolling motor, I know I'm pushing my trolling motor into the higher amperage all the time. Uh, and that's the reason, the other reason why I was drawn towards a 135. Small frame size, super lightweight, fast charging time, ultra long lasting. And I haven't had a single complaint or hiccup with them. So if anything I could say to you guys, if you're looking to lose some weight in the back of your boat, uh, even free up some space because these have such a small footprint, the DL135 Plus is the one you should be looking at, especially if you are fishing in the north and love to run your boats all winter long like we do here. Whether we're fishing walleye, uh, we're on the river smallmouth fishing, or on Lake Erie smallmouth fishing, or perch fishing, or we're on the Niagara River chasing trout around, which we do all winter long. And sometimes we end up at a hotel and you gotta leave your boat overnight. At least you know when you plug it in, if it is below zero outside, it will warm the cells up to that zero Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit, so that it will extend the life and allow them to charge properly. Because when one goes down, your whole series goes down. Guys, if you could do me a favor, that is a review of the Dakota Lithium DL135 Plus. Uh, it's also a walkthrough, so there should be plenty of information for you guys to get what you want out of it. Do me a favor, click subscribe down below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you want to talk about lithium batteries, I will tell you what my experiences have been. I have been running uh, the power box, the 10 amp power box, the 135 amp hour power box, the DL135 pluses for a while now, and then the 23 amp hour uh, is for my ice fishing setup. And I've been incredibly happy. So if you have any questions, leave them below. We'll get to them as fast as we possibly can. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you all have an incredible Christmas, New Year's, holiday season, whatever you're celebrating. But most of all, I still hope you guys are all catching some fish. Talk to you soon.